Today, I'm gonna do a walk around, a complete truck tour on this new 2024 Peterbilt 536 model hook lift truck. I'm gonna go through every feature on this truck, including all the customization that we did to it with the Powfinger T22, that's a 22,000 pound hook lift. Also a Donovan tarp and some customization from United Tarps. Before we get started though, I wanna give a special thank you to everybody over at Rubel Truck Sales. These guys are incredible. If you're looking for a truck, you're looking for an upfit, Rubel Truck Sales out of New Haven, Indiana is definitely some guys that you're gonna to wanna to talk to. But before we get any further, Casey, let's roll the intro. Let's come back and we're gonna talk all things hook whip with this brand new Peterbilt. Peterbilt 536 model. This is a D-rated 33,000 pound truck down to 26,000 pound under CDL truck. First thing we're gonna start with is the motor. This is a Packard PX9. It's also equipped with an Allison 3000 automatic transmission for the PTO runoff. This is a great motor. Um, I'm super excited to try this out. This is my first pack car motor. So it's the PX9, which is a little bit larger. Some of these trucks come equipped with the PX7, but I opted for the larger one. The Allison 3000 transmission will allow me to run my PTO directly off my transmission. One of the first customizations you'll notice about this truck are the strobe lights that we install in the grill. But it's not only in the grill that we put these strobe lights. We also have these lights on the side of the truck. We place a midship on the truck right here on the tarp arms. And then we also have strobe lights on the back of the truck in the, in the rear package of the truck as well. Right here on the bumper and the same thing on the other side right here. I'm a big fan of strobe lights, guys. Um, you never be too safe. I put those on anytime I'm working in a street, in a tight area, just to make everyone else around me a little bit more aware of what I've got going on. But this is a nice touch from the guys at Rubel Truck Sales, are these strobe lights here, midship, and in the front of the truck. It's no secret that you guys know I'm a big fan of Peterbilt. Couple reasons that I like Peterbilt over some of the other brands in the medium duty is this grill right here. It's a pretty tough grill, you can really, feet on it. The other thing I like too, I like the three piece chrome bumper. If you look at this, this is done in pieces. You have a center piece, you've got an end cap and another cap. The reason that Peterbilt does this is more times than not, if you tear up a dam, tear up one of your bumpers, it's going to be on the end that you tear it up. You unbolt it and you only have to replace the cap piece. You don't have to replace the entire bumper. It's a nice well thought out piece. Just another reason that I like Peterbilt. Other thing too, comes with these tow hooks on the front. Nobody wants to use these, but if you get in a situation where you're in a jam, you're in a pickle, you got these on. These are not just regular tow hooks. These tie all the way into the frame. So if you get somewhere, landfill, snow, stuck, slide off the road, someplace that just unfortunately you ended up in, hook onto these, pull yourself out, get out of your situation, go about your business. These are extremely durable. And like I say, they're tied all the way through to the frame. The next piece that we put on this truck, you guys probably aren't gonna be able to see, but I'm gonna tell you what I do anyway. I started doing this years ago, and basically I'm putting a clear bra on the truck. The clear bra on this one starts about right here and runs up over the top. I do the headlights to protect them, but I also do the front of the truck. So the entire front part of this truck minus the grill is covered in a clear bra. I do that guys for rock chips. It makes the truck look better for longer, but it really does protect the front. It protects these lenses. These lenses are crazy expensive and it just gives another added layer of protection against rock chips and different things like that. We've all seen trucks that are just 
peppered with rock chips on the front. I like to keep my stuff as nice as possible. So a little pro tip for you guys. Clear bra, guys, it's not just for your personal vehicles, for your trucks, your high-end cars, things like that. Don't be afraid to find somebody that can do some custom cutting on these and put clear bra on the front of your trucks. I'll try and get Casey to see if he can get, if he can see the line on this, but it basically comes about 12 inches and does the whole front end. It's a really nice touch. The other thing that I do on that as well, I also do my boxes. I do the bottom part of the boxes with the clear bra as well. Again, it'll be hard to see, but it's about 12 inches. It just protects them from all the rock chips and all the different things like that. It's a nice little subtle touch that nobody sees, but it'll keep your equipment looking better, newer, for longer. Little pro tip for you, don't be afraid to try that. And of course, we got our signature American flag I like to put on all my equipment. I'm super patriotic. I love this country, I love everything about it. And if you notice, whether it's a truck, a dumpster, an attachment, a skid steer, it doesn't matter. If it's in my inventory and it's an asset that I own it, it's got an American flag on it. And of course, this unit number, 5361. We spec this one with the chrome mirrors. I'm a big mirror guy. I like mirrors, I like big mirrors, being able to see. These also come with, they're heated mirrors and they're fully controlled inside the cab. So you, you don't have to get out and adjust them or do anything like that. Uh, much like your daily driver pickup, you can adjust and move those mirrors. This is, a, this is a really cool thing, guys, that a lot of people don't think about. These mirrors are not mounted to the door. These mirrors, they mounted on the truck. So if you ever have to get out of your truck to get into traffic, you can always be looking in your mirror and seeing what's going on behind you. Because when you open that door, the mirror doesn't move. A lot of trucks, when you open that door, because the mirror is mounted to the door, you open the door and your mirror moves away from traffic. I use this all the time. If I have to get out of my truck in live traffic, I'll always watch the mirror and I can see what's coming from behind me. Just a little pro tip, a little something simple, but it makes a big difference on it. I like these mirrors. They're heated mirrors. They do a great job. The next part on this truck is the DEF tank. We took and we customized this cover on it. We took it off, we sandblasted it, we primered it, we sanded it, we painted it. This is a five and a half gallon DEF tank. So I like the amount of it up right behind here. A lot of guys opt to mount it behind the fuel tank. I'm a little different. I want it as protected as possible. So I want it in the protection behind this fender. So that's where I tend to put mine. The next part you're gonna see is you're gonna see the fuel tank. This thing can carry a lot of fuel for a medium duty tr truck. This is an 80 gallon fuel tank. You'll see that we did some customization to it. We took the tank off, we sandblasted it, we painted it, and then of course we decaled it with our name and with our DOT number. One thing that you guys can't see on this is I also put clear bra over this tank. And the reason I did that is as I'm climbing in and out of this truck with my boots on, I don't have boots on today, but as I climb in and out of it, I might touch this and scuff it. I don't want to scratch the paint. I don't want to tear up decals. So a nice little pro tip for you guys. Don't be afraid if you're going to paint and put decals on your tank to go ahead and put clear bra over the top of them. The next little bit of customization we did is we put a little bit of window tint on it. I don't like it dark. I don't want it to impede my vision out the windows, but I do like a little bit of tint. It tends to keep the glare down at night for me. It's just me personally. And also it tends to keep the cab a little bit cooler. Two other things that you might notice right off the bat that we did in here. We took all the grab bars and we painted them our custom safety blue. So you got this grab bar, you got that grab bar, and then we custom did the steering wheel as well. So a shout out to JR at Wasatch Abrasive, but that's another little thing that's just, you know, customized specialty for us. We'll get more into the interior in a bit, but uh, a lot of guys have already noticed and started commenting to me about the safety blue grab bars. They're both on both sides too. So there's four of them in there. They're all painted up blue. Just a nice little touch to make it, make it feel like our truck. Right here, you're gonna see an air exhaust. And basically what this is, is the old school Peterbilt. So when I say old school, not even too long ago, 
you used to have to crack the window in order to shut the door because the cabs were so airtight, you would blow out the seals around the door. So what they've done now is they've added this exhaust on both sides, this side and the other side. So when you go to shut this door, you can give it a nice solid shut without having to crack your window. That's how we used to do it. Crack that window so that air could exhaust out. Otherwise, you were always giving your seals fits. Guys, I wanna talk about the tarp. I'm super excited about this tarp. This is a tarp system that Rubel recommended to me and I'm so glad that they did. This is built by Donovan. And then on the top part of it, United Tarps. George with United Tarps made me a custom tarp and I'm gonna show that to you. But let me walk through this tarp and let me show you why I like it so much. So this, this tarp is really cool because it comes with a full handheld remote. It also comes with a real easy touch right outside of the truck. So this tarp is a little bit different because it has full hydraulic arms. So not only will this tarp hydraulically cover, those arms will also extend besides the top hat going up. The other really cool, just nice little touch on this is anytime you touch this tarp, these lights are gonna come on. Well, they didn't, but. These lights are gonna come on, which is a real nice feature on it. So when you're doing stuff a little bit later at night or you just want a little bit more visibility in your workspace, having extra lights just brings attention to you and what you're doing. One thing that you guys are gonna notice right off the bat before I open this up anymore is the hook cutout right here. This is a brilliant addition to tarps. And George and his team over there at United Tarps hit this one out of the park. So basically, instead of your hook always rubbing on the top of your tarp and wearing it out, they've cut out a hook section, which is really cool. They also did a couple other things like some customization lettering underneath this and different things. And then when you get to covering your load, you can extend out these arms. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So really a fantastic tarp. I love the design of the tarp. I like the extendable arms on the tarp. I like everything on it is hydraulic and it's self-contained on its own system. George, you guys at United, thank you. This is, you. You guys beat my expectation on this. If you guys are looking for tarps or a replacement tarp, hit up George at United Tarps. He's built a couple for me now. And I'm telling you, the quality of work is unmatched. Thank you, George. I appreciate everything you and your team do for us. Next part on this truck, we've got the Bendex air dryer. I like Bendex air dryer because they're so easy to get serviced. Everybody in the country and every city has parts and service for Bendex air, air dryers. So I've got that. Right here, we have the hydraulic tank. Guys, it's no secret. I'm a big fan of hydraulic tanks that are saddle mount on the frame. I don't prefer my tanks mounted up here. It's just not my style, it's not what I like. I like them down, I like them on the frame, and I like them somewhere near my control box. So right here, I've got the hydraulic tank that runs this entire Powell Finger T22. Right here, I've got the Powell Finger T22, kind of the brains of it. This is where all the valves, all the sensors, this is where everything's located right here. You're gonna have one of these units, and they usually don't move these around. They usually come from the factory, installed on the subframe right here. One thing that we did though, guys, that's kind of fun, is we changed out and we custom colored these decals per pile finger. You'll see them right here. They're not the, just the traditional yellow and black. We turned them into our custom blue and yellow. We put them up here on the hook. We put another one right here. We've got a set of them on the lift hoist right here. And then there's another one right here on the back 
just to kind of polish it off and finish it off. It's little things like this that I really like. I enjoy doing when I build a truck. It just allows me to build the truck and customize it to my own. It's not like everybody else, but that's a nice touch right there. Let me know what you guys think about those custom decals if you like those or maybe you think I went a little too far by doing it, but I think it just kind of polishes and sets off the truck. Okay, the next feature on this, obviously this is a Donovan hydraulic tarp. One thing that we did though that I like to do, it's a safety thing, but it adds a little bit of bling to the truck as well. You'll notice I got mid truck marker lights and I also have the strobe lights right here as well. I like that. Um, it's for me it's safer it's more visibility again it costs a dollar more to add this stuff in but at the end of the day my safety on the side of a road uh, me returning home to my family it's really kind of hard to put a price on that but i like these little things little lights little extra safety features on the truck so the next part you guys are going to notice is this custom toolbox right here we obviously took this toolbox we pulled it off we sandblasted it we painted it I really like the durability of these boxes. I like having a box on the driver's side. Most hook lift trucks only have a, a box on the passenger side. I prefer one having on this side as well and I keep a little bit different things in it. This has a real nice locking mechanism that if you're gonna leave your truck somewhere unattended, maybe you store it in a yard with other trucking companies, you can put any standard padlock on this and you can lock it up. Inside on this one, this is what I carry on this side of the truck for me. So I carry rolly skates. I've obviously got rolly skates that I carry in here. And then a lot of you guys that follow me on Instagram and my stories, I custom painted the pads and another couple of sets, my safety blue. So I've got blue and I've got white because I'm going to end up on a on a customer's driveway, much like this concrete that we're on right now. I'm not gonna wanna use the blue ones cause I'm not gonna wanna scratch blue off. So I'll use white when it's on concrete and then I'll use the blue ones in other situations. The other thing I have in here is I have my spill kit bucket. I've been posting about this a lot lately. This is made by Pig and it's my spill kit. So I keep my spill kit bucket in here. This is for hydraulic fluid. This is for any any spills or anything like that. Um, we had another roll off company in Southern California send me pictures, kind of bringing awareness. Hey, this is something that doesn't get talked about enough. And he sent me some pictures. So I've started talking about it a little bit more. If you don't have a spill kit guys, I think that this one right here is a five gallon. I think they're about 95, maybe $97. It is the cheapest insurance. If one of your hoses fall off on your hydraulic tank and all of a sudden you create a spill, yeah, you might be carrying some cat litter, but just go do it the right thing. Pick up a five gallon bucket from Pig, get a spill kit, get it put on your truck. The next thing I keep in here is a Sawzall and I keep a battery. Once a week, regardless if I use this Sawzall or not, I pull this out on Saturday nights and I get, make sure it's fully charged. I use these for anything that uh, might be sticking up extra in the dumpster, uh, a branch, a chair leg, and there's all sorts of uses, uses for those. Uh, I use Diablo blades, works out pretty good for me. Okay, next part back. Guys, I like polyurethane fenders. I don't like metal fenders. I don't like anything that's heavy. I want something that's durable, that has some movement to it, it has some flexibility to it. This is a pain point for all of us in this industry, fenders. So I went with a fender that's large enough to cover these 22.5 tires. I want something that's gonna be pretty forgiving in the landfill. I get a lot of snow, I get a lot of ice, I get a lot of mud like all of us do. And sometimes the weight of those on metal, they'll start to crack, they'll start to break, and then they'll come off. So for me personally, I like the polyurethane. With that though, if you notice, I don't like mounting mud flaps on my fenders. I don't like it at all. More times than not, these guys will mount these mud flaps on the bottom of this fender. The problem with that is 
Now your fender hangs down into here, and when you back into the landfill, you're gonna tear it off. So for me, I prefer to keep them separate. I mount them up here on the light bar. It's something a little bit unique to me, a little bit different. I'm sure some of you guys are doing something similar, but that's how I like to run my fenders and my mud flaps on the back. The other thing I like to add to my trucks, and you guys see this on my dumpsters, my trucks, my skid steers, everything, is this safety yellow reflective tape. I like it. It stands out, hardly anybody runs it. It makes you very visible, it gets you noticed. Yes, I have the DOT compliant tape here, here, here and there, but I also like to run this super high vis yellow tape. I think it sets off well with the truck, but I really like the visibility of that on there as well. So for my suspension guys on this, I'm a big Pete Air Track guy, always have been. I like Pete Air Track. It's a combination of spring and airbags. And this truck's no different. I've got Pete Air Track on this truck. I think for the construction application, there isn't a better suspension. I feel that full air ride doesn't give you the movement you need off-road. I feel like walking beam is just you know, a walking beam, a Chalmers, a Camelback, whatever you want to call it. I feel it's too stiff and it just beats you to death. The Pete Air Track is a super, super good suspension if you're doing any type of vocational, which obviously in hook lift we are. So you get the smoothness over the road, but you also get that spring suspension that'll get down and dirty with you and walk with you a little bit. So if you're buying it, if, if you're specking a Pete or looking at it, I would 100% recommend you put Pete Air Track on your application for your truck. So on the back style of this, I have a unique bumper that's, I'm not saying it's unique to me, but this is what I like. This is the style that I like. It's a heavier back end. It has a little bit of slope to it. So the truck's just not cut off straight off. It has a little bit of added protection back here. I like this for, say, unfortunately you get rear ended. If you don't have a bumper back here, your rear end is gonna get right into your hook system and you're gonna really, really mess some stuff up and probably destroy your entire hook lift system. You put even just a little bit of bumper back here, it still has a slope so that you can empty your cans and they not hit your bumper, but it gives you that added protection of, of protecting your system by another foot in case somebody hits into it. The other thing I always do is I always put a tow hitch on the back of my hook lift trucks. Even if you're not gonna pull with it, I think this is a crazy underutilized option that not enough guys put on their trucks. If your pickup goes down, your daily goes down, it just gives you the world of options if you can have a tow on it. Then I got some super heavy tow D-rings on it as well for chains, for cables, for added securement. On the back of it, I have my three pack of bullet lights. This is one area that I like the traditional bullet lights. They're very bright. Uh, they protect you on the back end very well. And then obviously a seven way. Guys on this truck, I took the factory seven way that came all the way to the back and I just put it into this. So this seven way is actually factory wired. I just took the end of it and after I built my bumper, I just tied it into that factory seven way. It's gonna save you a lot of problems with like shortages, lighting outages, and different things like that. When you spec your truck, if you can get the trailer package, which brings the air and electrical all the way to the back, you're gonna be much better off. I don't have air to the back of the truck, but I do have them capped off just inside. Do a real nice job capping those off so that if I ever want to add air to it, it's simply drilling a hole or two, re-tapping into those airlines and having them back. But that is factory air and electrical from Peterbilt all the way from the cab, all the way to the back. Palfinger does a really good job of their roller systems on the back. They're heavy duty. They got grease points here and grease points on the end. I've got one of their systems that's greaseless. It doesn't require any grease and it is a fantastic system. But I do think when you step up and you start getting a little bit heavier trucks, I think having grease points on the back of these here on the rollers, <coughs> here on the arms is absolutely vital. So a job well done on that. These are my hot bar locks right here. 
These are removable. You can see that they come unbolted. I can slide them. I can move them to match up to my hot bars. Guys, I've talked about this before and I'm gonna reiterate it again. When you get a new truck, fit your truck to all your cans. Because if you're running 80 cans, you need to make your, just make the change once on your truck and then it fits all of your cans. Too many times guys are trying to leave the truck alone and change up their cans. That is backwards, it's not the way to do it. Once you start getting any real number of cans and all your cans are set up the same when you get a new truck, adjust the truck to fit your cans. These are nice because they bolt on, they have the ability to slide, to move. I've got quite a bit of movement and flexibility with these, but this is how I run. I run outside hot bars. Those are the lock, and basically what happens is the dumpster slides into position. Those bars slide right underneath that and lock them into place. That's what keeps them on the truck. So if you hit a railroad track or you hit a big pothole or you hit a big bump, that's what keeps the can on the back from jumping and jumping off these rails right here. So a real important part that not enough of us talk about, and maybe I need to do a video just on hot bars and how they work and the purpose of them and stuff like that. But that's what these are is the hot bars for that. On this side, I put a five foot box on this side. So on this side, guys, it's the same style box. It's just a little bit bigger. And here's what I keep on this side, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what I keep in here. I keep my Gladiator cargo net. This is what I use to cover up my concrete bins, different things like that. I've got that in here as well as I've got my straps. So I've got 12 of these straps that I use to tie it down for quick tie down, quick release and things like that. So I keep my straps in here, a leaf blower. I'm a big fan of when I'm done picking up a dumpster. I'll leaf blow off someone's driveway, just an added little extra touch. Uh, it's got an attachment to it here that just slips on real nice. This is battery operated. Um, again, it's just, it's a nice touch when you pick up a dumpster and you take an extra 30 seconds and you leaf blow off their driveway. Shows them that you care about it. It's a added touch that not enough guys in our industry are doing. It really doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you any time you make the initial investment in it, but your clients are gonna notice it. The other thing I keep in here, a couple bungee cords. Uh, the bungee cords are to, when I open the door up at the transfer station or landfill, I use those to, to secure the door, make sure it just doesn't swing open. And then the last thing I keep on this side, I keep a grease gun. I use this to grease the truck, the fittings, the dumpsters, skid steers, doesn't matter what it is. Got a grease gun in here that I use on the regular. That's what I keep on this side on this toolbox. Next up guys, I have the battery cover right here. So again, this was custom painted just like everything else on the truck. It's really easy to access. You pull off these right here and you got the batteries direct from pack car. So deep cycle batteries, it's nice, it's clean. Another little thing guys here that I like is right here on the side, I got a dead man switch. Not enough guys put these on, but here's my dead man switch right here. So if I want to, and I'm gonna step away from the truck for any amount of time, you just kill that dead man switch and you're not gonna have any battery drain. Super nice, super convenient. Enough guys don't think about that. Uh, but if you're gonna spec a truck, make sure it's got a dead band on it. All right, next part is I've got dual air tanks that I had mounted underneath the battery. These are real nice. You can pull these at night. You can just drain out your tanks. Maybe. There we go. So, that's, make sure you keep those drained at night, keep the moisture out of it, keep the water out of it. I like them mounted right here, they're up, they're out of the way. Really not a whole lot to say about it, but there are dual tanks right there. I got a five inch stack right here 
One thing that I do like to do on these stacks is I like to put grab bars on it. If you guys have ever been burned by one of these stacks, you only do it once. I have a couple of scars on both arms uh, from doing heavy haul, and I was always burning myself on these stacks. I have a love-hate relationship with them. But we got a nice little baloney cut at the top on this stack. I, I'm just not a fan of the round tip on the top. I like the baloney cut. It's just a little, just personal taste, uh, how I like it. But I've got this handle on it, so if you do have someone getting in and out of the truck on the passenger side, instruct them to hold this so that they don't grab something else and get burned. And finish off this side of the truck, we took this piece. Obviously, this has all your regen, has a lot of exhaust uh, components behind it, and we pulled it off and we painted it. Um, pulled it off, sandblasted it, sanded it, primered it, painted it. I've got my DOT up here. I've got my logo on the side right here. Guys, one thing about this side that, uh, I'll have Casey try and grab a picture of this. These steps are staggered. So the top steps here and the lower ones out. So it's more like a step, like you're climbing stairs to get into the truck. The older trucks were stacked on top of each other. So it's more kind of like climbing a ladder and it made it tricky to get in if you had any snow or ice. But I'll have him grab a picture of this. Little tiny details that Peterbilt has made, but they make the world a difference. But this is a pretty nice touch. Hope you guys like that. Uh, it's a way to do it a little bit different. Keep the logo off the, off the cab. It's not I don't want it on the cab. I just like this look. I did this for years when I was running Peterbilt's before and I just, I like the simplicity and the cleanliness of it. One of the first things in any truck I like to talk about is the, the seat, the chair, whatever you want to call it. This, is, this one is specced with three features right here. I got three switches right here. The first one, that's a heated seat. Look guys, I'm in Salt Lake City, it gets cold, and I like a heated seat as much as anybody. So that switch right there, heated seat. The next one up, this is, this is a raised lower of the chair. So I can adjust my height. Raise lower. I'm a little bit of a kind of an old heavy haul guy by heart, so I kind of like to sit low in my Peterbilt. It just kind of is what it is. The third one is lumbar support. That right there is what's going to give you your back support and different things like that. So it's real nice. So if you've been driving, uh, your back's hurting a little bit, you can inflate this, you can deflate this, and get the customization of the ride that you like. Obviously, it comes from the factory with a fire extinguisher that's required. It's a real handy place to have it in case you do have the unfortunate event that something catches on fire, you got quick access to it. I also, just as a pro tip, I keep an extinguisher on the passenger side of the truck as well. I'll show you where I keep that on the other side. I do that so that if I'm on this side, a fire breaks out, I don't wanna have to run all the way around the truck and grab a fire extinguisher. So I have one on both sides of the truck. Obviously we have these custom safety blue grab bars here and here. And then one nice thing about these are these have the adjustable armrests that can come up and down. And there's dual armrests on this truck. So I have, a, I have one for my left arm. I have another one over here for the right arm. Just nice little things that make it a nice little touch. Let's talk about the door. So in the door, I got a nice little mat pocket. I use this for um, my rat cards. So I have these in my door right here. That's what I use the mat pocket for. I also keep my remote in here. And this is where I keep all of my scale tickets so that I can reconcile at the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the month. I keep that there with the remote. This has a really nice feature. It's very similar to, here, come, come pull up here. It's very similar to what you're used to seeing in a pickup. We've got power windows. We also have your lock and your unlock for both doors right here. And then you have your mirrors, your left and your right mirror that you can absolutely control. So all those are real nice. They're real nice touch, just feel for touch so you don't even have to take your eyes off the road. So up here, we got a couple of things. One, we've got the traditional leather 
air horn pole, uh, just something should never be changed. And I think this is one of them. This is really a cool feature I've always liked. Uh, if I do have one complaint on the Chevrolet 6500, and you guys know what I'm gonna say, the, the horn on those trucks sound like a moped. And I wish Chevy would do something with them. They're atrocious. Even the city horn is a pretty good size horn, but so you got your city horn right here in the steering wheel, and then you got your air horns up top. So uh, you never have too much horn when there's impending danger or traffic or something that calls for you using your horn to warn others. The other nice thing about this is you actually have your sun visor that comes down. Uh, that's gonna give you protection at different times during the day. And then up here, this is really kind of cool. This is a place to carry extra stuff, but it's removable. So you can take this out, you can clean it out. You can actually wipe this out with a Clorox wipe because these get kind of gringy up in there. Clean it out a little bit, uh, make it nice and clean. And then it goes right back in and just sets right back into place. That's really cool. There's another one on the other side as well. It's little things like this, guys, that just make your time in the cab so much more enjoyable. Because let's face it, this is your office, this is your home, this is your work area, this is your workspace. You need to be as comfortable as possible. All right, guys, next we're gonna talk about the steering wheel. Now, I took off the factory steering wheel, as you can tell. I like to customize it. I went with the darker blue that we use in our logo and everything. One nice thing about Peterbilt is I can adjust this. I can adjust it up and I can pull the steering wheel out. So it has up down movement, plus it has telescoping in and out. I'm a big fan of all the way in and all the way down. For me, that's just what I like. Then you lock it back in, you're good to go. As you guys will see, this is a whole new cluster for this truck. You can customize it. Guys, there is so much on this. This is basically an iPad. And there's so much in that you can do to this to customize it. I'm gonna save that for another episode if you guys want me to go through that. But literally, I could spend a half hour just on this cluster to let you know how to customize it. So right here, we've got our lights. We've got auto, off, parking lights. You got your hazards. You can adjust how bright you want them in here. I'm playing with that all the time at night. I don't do a lot of night trucking, uh, obviously in dumpsters, but we are gonna start coming up on a shorter time of year where in my neck of the woods by 445, it's dark and I'm still running. So I do play with that. You've got your load lights in the back. And then if you put a strobe light on your truck, you can wire it in there. Over here on this side, you've got the control that controls your dash. This is really kind of the brains to it all. So you're gonna scroll through this and you can change different looks on the truck. Again, I'll do this in a specific episode, but that's kind of where that is. Okay, on this side, obviously you've got the on off for the key right here. Uh, I do like how Peterbilt's gone to a lock, unlock, and then a light. I like that feature. I keep obviously a key on there. I keep gate keys. I've got a cat key. And then this is just personal preference. I air tag everything I own. I got air tags on everything. Um, so just like to know where my truck's at, if there's movement in it. Maybe if it's in a shop, I can tell if they've started moving the truck to do work on it. A lot of benefits to that. Up here, I got my cruise. The on off for the cruise, set resume, and I got a spare switch. On this spare, I don't have anything right now. Down here, I got the engine brake, and then I've got another spare, and then I've got my regen switch that I can do manually, I can disable, I can do different things. Right here, I got trailer brake, which I don't use at all because I don't have any trailer supply going to the back, but it comes with it. I got the truck brake here. This right here is for the trailer brake as well. You'll hear it, but again, I'm not using trailer brakes, so that's there. Two more spares and a rear axle lock. I'll go more into this in another episode, but you have the ability to lock in your rear axle. This will come super handy for me in landfills, especially as we come more into winter and the wet months, I'll use that a lot more. 
Up here, I got two nice features. I got cell phone cubby holes right here. I got both those. I've got Bluetooth stereo in it, and then I've got all my comfort down here from the fan to auto to AC to max, different things like that. Right here, I've got my airbag dump, and right here, I've got my live PTO that goes into it. Up on the front, I've added a dash cam, and I actually have an episode coming. The next episode after this is talking about dash cams and everything dash cam. So I've got that going in. Right here, this is the Allison transmission, all things gear shift. This is reverse, neutral drive. You can manually shift it. This is really nice though, because it's not lifted up out of the dash. It's recessed in, it's super clean. It's got a really nice install on it. I like the space that I can put my feet underneath here or a lunchbox or anything like that. Super clean how they did this. I'm obviously making use of this. I got a cup holder. I keep business cards. I keep scanning cards. Um, don't forget to floss, like floss your teeth. I've got my lighters, which are my business cards as well. I keep those in here. Uh, in here, I've got two places to directly plug in power outlets so I can charge my phone. I use one of them to power up the dash cam as far as that's concerned. Moving along right here, this is something that was put in by Ruble. This is, uh, where I put the controls for the PAL finger. One thing that I do, guys, um, there's a lot of cable that comes with this. I spool mine up right here, zip tie it up and hang on here. I keep just enough spool that I can stand outside the truck and operate it. I've talked about this before. I like to be outside the truck if I and operate it. So this gives me just enough of that. And then obviously it's got a magnet on it. So I keep it on the side. This is my PTO light, letting me know that my PTO is engaged. And this light right here runs my strobe lights. And this one right here allows me to change the pattern. Super clean though, I can put it on top. I prefer to run it on the side. Uh, just a super clean install. I like how that works. Coming over here, there's a little bit of a glove box, not much. I keep some lens wipes in here. I keep a tape measure in there. I keep a knife in there and I keep some more business cards in there. Not a lot of space for it. They just kind of run around. Um, you know, that just kind of is what it is. When I come over here, I've got this pouch right here behind the seat. I carry all my keys to the gates, to my storage units, to anything that I have a key to. That kind of rides right there. I carry some Clorox wipes. I'm kind of a clean freak. Uh, and then I also carry some glass cleaner lights and different things like that. If you guys look out the back, this is a really cool feature on this truck and I'll have Casey do the best he can. This is a three piece window. Instead of it being one big piece in the back, if you get a rock chip in vocational, we're, we're always breaking out these windows with rock chips. So having a three piece allows me if I only crack this window to replace this window. If I break this one, only replace that. I like the idea and it gives me a lot more visibility. Guys, with a quick glance out here, I pick up so much out of this third window right here. It, it is amazing what it does for your blind spot. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It makes all the difference in the world having that much more visualization out the back. And same thing here. I can see all the way over to my tarp. I can see my wheels. I can see everything like that. So when you're specking these trucks, ask for the three window package in the back of them. It makes a big, big, big difference. One of the really cool things I like about this is I did put a high back chair in here that matches the driver's side. I don't run with a lot of passengers, but when I do, it's usually somebody. <laughs> I built this one with a high back seat, just like the driver's seat. I have a fair amount of guys that fly into town and do ride alongs with me and I want them to be comfortable. So I've got the same chair here. Unfortunately though, it's not air ride. And I'll tell you why. This has a really cool storage compartment underneath here. So this is a build-in storage and you just turn this knob 
and look at how big that storage container is. I keep everything from my triangles to a first aid kit, to extra grease, to extra gloves, to a battery charger in here. This is my indoor storage for me to keep all that stuff that maybe I don't want rolling around in a box. Maybe I don't want them in the weather outside there. This is a super nice feature on this truck. You can put just about anything you want in there. And then it just twists up nice. Of course, on this side, I've got the safety blue grab arm arms on it. Guys, the bottom line is this is a big cab. This has a lot of space in it. I'm super pleased with it. I love how everything turned out on it and uh, we're excited to get this truck to work. The last feature I wanna show you guys on this truck before we wrap up the video is my curb mirror. So the curb mirror, basically what it does is I have that angled. So when I look through that mirror in the driver's seat, I can look right down here and I can see exactly the space I am off the curb. This is really nice if you're working in tight areas, you're working next to fences, maybe cars, super tight alleys. This is a feature that I use all the time. It's a great feature and uh, just thought I'd mention that to you because not enough guys take advantage of it. But if you, if you get it positioned right, it's a beautiful thing to be able to see down here. We're not tearing up front bumpers, we're not tearing up tires, we're not scuffing rims. We're just not tearing up equipment. Use the tools the, ways that, the way that they're designed for you guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the truck tour of this 2024 Peterbilt 536. We're super excited about this truck. We've had a ton of people, Ruble Truck Sales, Donovan Tarbs, uh, George at United Tarbs, JR and his time at Wasatch Abrasive, Cesar and the guys at Salt Lake Mobile Details, not to mention Casey and his time. A ton of work has gone into this truck. We hope you guys enjoy it. We're excited to put it to work. Guys, don't forget, we have a contest going on right now where if you name this truck on our YouTube channel, name this truck, you can win $1,000. All you guys gotta do is head on over to last week's video. You're gonna see the video of me driving this truck. Name this truck. If I choose the name that you put down in the comments, you win a thousand bucks. Super simple. This video is being run for just a couple of weeks and then I'm gonna choose a winner. It's not complicated, there's nothing else to it. You think you got a clever, a good name, a bold name, a name that I would enjoy that ties in with my brand, whatever your reasoning for the name, just drop the name down in the comments. But you gotta leave that name on last week's video. Don't leave it on this video, leave it on last week's video. You'll clearly know which video it is because we tell you, this is the video to name the truck, win a thousand bucks. Guys, we appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed the walk around. Hope you learned something, a thing or two about our truck, why we spec them, how we spec them, the little extra things that we do. But we appreciate you guys, all you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. To all my friends out there in the Stay Loaded Nation, keep those trucks loaded, keep those dumpsters loaded, and most importantly, let's keep those bank accounts loaded. We'll see you guys next time.